All right, guys, welcome back. So um, what I'm gonna do really quick, just for, this is something that applies to uh, all different types of classes. So I do this, when I, whenever I do work for a client, illustrations, drawings, design, character design, environment design, whatever it might be, this is something that I do that I create to help m myself along that everyone in you, you in here should do on your own time. Not to mention, I found that I send these, what I call a reference sheet. Somebody call, calls them, some people call them mood sheets, okay? I send those to my clients sometimes when I'm working on a project to show them the reference that I've discovered. Part of my job as an artist in doing any type of design process is to come up with the material and the background to support what it is I'm going to do. So what I've done here, I'm in Photoshop and I have just a really simple eight and a half by 11 document right here, okay? Um, I prefer to create my reference sheets in either eight and a half by 11 or legal size, eight and a half by 14, okay? So it's actually this simple. All I'm going to do is you come up here, you know, go under File, New. I actually had created this. Um, let me create a new doc here. Let me just, I like to do eight and a half by 14. That way it's a little bit more wider scale. And if they ever want to print it 11 by 17, it's the same format. It's just smaller, so it's easier for a studio to print this image. And usually I don't keep it, I usually put it about 150 DPI because this is only for reference. I don't want to tax my, sh my machine, okay? So it's not a bad idea to keep this at eight and a half by 11. Then I just zoom in and this is all I basically do. I'm going to come down here under file. I'm going to go to open. Um, and I'm going to grab a bunch of reference that I have on my desktop. So what I did is I created this. Let me see if this is the folder here. There it is. So you guys are going to be working on cats. Okay, it's one of the next, uh, one of the part, the third animal inside your first character design. So this is what I would do. I'm going to select all these images here. I'm going to hit open. Photoshop's going to open them all for me. If you don't have Photoshop, sometimes you can just drag and drop. Or if you have an, uh, a Mac computer, Sometimes you can just click it open. It brings it open in a preview window. You can select all, copy, and then just paste it into Photoshop. But this is what I do. Select all, copy, or I just take my marquee and I find the designated area that I want. I don't care about this up here. All I want is this guy's cute little round face to sort of guide me in my design process. I hit Control C. I copy that. Now I'm going to come back over here um, and I'm going to find that other window that I have here. I think it's entitled, nope, that's not it. Let's get it. Entitled 2. All right, and what I'm going to do is once this pulls up here, okay, um, you can drag it off and keep it separate. That way you can look back at your reference really quickly, okay? So I have this. I'm going to hit paste. I'm going to take my little guy and I'm going to slide him right over here into the corner, okay? When I'm done with that, I'm going to come back here to the next image, okay? So if I touch back here, there's a next image. Again, I don't want everything in there. I only want, you know, I want part of his body and his gesture. That's all I want. I'm going to select copy and come back over here. I'm going to go to paste, okay, and I'm going to move him over to the side, okay, like this. So I'm basically going to keep doing this. I'm just going to fill my page here of reference right now. So I'm done with him. I'm going to close that image. All right, that's the next cat that comes up. And again, I like that face that's on him. I just found him really quick. I like that sort of surprise face, right? Copy. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to hit paste. I'm going to put him up. Now he comes a little smaller. So... I, a lot of times I can enlarge him just a little bit and it won't get too pixelated. I can still see his face there. That's working just fine. I like to drop them in the order that I put them in here so I can see their little silhouettes that are in here, okay? I'm going to come back over here. Let's move this to the side. Let me finish this real quick. I'll grab a couple more so I don't want to save that. Um, here's another one that I grabbed. I like that grumpy face right there. So it's funny the personality that you can find by spending a couple minutes to gather your reference. Okay, that is great reference right there. Copy that, I'm gonna come back over, paste that in here. Now it's in pretty large, so I'm gonna, you know, control T, transform. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna see if I can fit him sort of down here in the corner. Some people overlap, that's completely up to you. I do that sometimes. I just get the images in, so I have this, this page. Once I have this page done, I'm gonna print this out or keep it available so when I'm working, I could quickly reference this page and it's gonna guide me through part of my design process, okay, which is really, really important. So um, let me move that. So let's come back here. I don't need that image anymore. Um, let's see what else I got. I had grabbed a couple. I already got that guy, had my marquee in it. So those are somebody else's sketches I saw. I might save that for another page. There, I like that fierce 
image right there. He's like growling. Rawr. So I'm going to copy him. Let's come back over here. I'm going to paste that inside there. Again, it's pretty large. Okay. And the great, what's the great thing about printing this eight and a half by 14? Is that I can still print it 11 by 17. It'll come out the same size and dimensions. That's why I prefer that legal size. Okay. Uh, let me close that down. And I'll come back to those that somebody else's artwork. I just thought that these were great designs. I might put those into a second page. So I'm going to come back to this guy here. And I really liked him. I like a couple things about him. I like that face and I like that fluffy body and tail. Okay. So that's really a, a good, you know, piece of reference for me because I could have a, a cat that's like pure fluffiness. I can really push that exaggeration by looking at my reference here. So I'm going to copy that. Let's come back here. I'm going to fit him in here somewhere. Um, let me see if I can't get him up about right here. Let me see if I get him a little bit smaller, move him in. And then I have this other image that was up above right here. And I'm going to move this guy down to the corner right about there. Okay. So I'm almost done here. Again, it's a super quick demo, right? So I'm going to save that one, save that one for another, save that. And there we go. That was it. So this right here, okay. So, so far this right here, this is my sheet. Then I might look at it and, you know, what can I enlarge or desize? And this actually isn't that bad um, the way it is right now. He fits over there sort of perfect. I might, I was curious if I drop this guy under here, I can still see his fluffiness and then I could maybe enlarge him a little bit. I like that face a lot. So that's it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. Save as. Okay, I have a folder that was already created. I'm not going to save it as a PSD. You can save it as a PSD if you want to, but I call this ref1. Reference page. Oops, I hit cap lock there. Reference page one dot PSD. Okay. And then after I do that, I'm going to come back and I'm going to save it now as a JPEG. So I save them as both. There's a reason for that. Because I save it as a JPEG so it's faster and easier to print. Okay. And then I save it as a PSD in case I want to go back there and I lose something, I can access the page real quick. I'm going to save that. Okay. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of all these images here. I'm going to hit delete layers. And I had a couple other pieces here. Select all, copy, touch my original. I'm going to paste that in the bottom corner like so. Um, I'm going to come over here, select all, copy. I'm going to paste that in here. Okay. Somebody else's. So these are another artist designs. There's nothing wrong with looking at somebody else's approach. Because if I can take a couple of these approaches and merge them together into my design process, I'm going to be that much more successful as an artist. Okay, So you can't be expected to do all this stuff out of your own brain. You can't. You need to look at reference. Okay, But there's a point in time when I look at reference and then I put the reference away. Okay, So I use it to guide me. I don't trace off of it. I look at the reference quite a bit. I'll look at it now and then I'll put it away. I'll go home and then I look at it. Then I'll look at it that evening because I'm actually absorbing part of the shapes and the language and, and the stuff that's in there. And that gets absorbed into my mind. So when I sit down to draw, that's how I come to better conclusions. Okay. So that's done. So what am I going to do? I'm going to come back under file. Be very careful though. I didn't save. Hit save as because the file is still reference one. I want to save this now as reference number two. Okay. So if I save that, that's done. Go back again, file, save as, and then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to change this to JPEG, okay, and hit save. All right. Uh-oh. I hit something else by accident because I don't know what that was. Save as, and let's come down here. Let's go JPEG. There it is. Save. Okay, and large file. Okay. So now I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to come over to my folder that I just created, and... Uh, what I'm going to do is I don't need any of the new reference that I had that I grabbed. All I need are my reference pages in the Photoshop. So here's all the images that I brought in here that I grabbed off of the website and Google. I'm just going to delete these images right now and I'm going to be left with this. And what I like to do is I like to do this. I just like to be organized. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it reference pages. Okay. Sorry guys, I keep hitting a uh, ref pages okay and what I'm gonna do then is in this folder so I'm gonna grab all these I'm gonna drag and drop them and then in here I'm gonna put cat okay new folder and then I'm gonna select all these oh, I don't need that little guy just delete him 
So I'm going to select these. I'm going to drag and drop those. And when I open up Cat, what I'm going to have is I just like to be organized. It saves me a lot of time in finding files. Some of you give me your thumb drives, and there's like no folders and like 100 images. I don't know how you work like that. It's insane. It just takes like 30 seconds here, and then I'm done. So a new folder here, and I'm going to call this my PSDs. So I have a backup in case there's something I have to move. So now I'm going to come over here, select these, drop them in there, select my PSDs, drop them in there. So now I go take these two, look at what I have. I'm working, and I can pull these guys up. Really fantastic, okay? Now if you want, let me show you a really great piece of technology that's came out recently. It's free. You can make a little donation if you'd like. Let me see if I have it on my desktop here. There it is. So let's say I'm in Photoshop now, okay, and I'm going to be, hold on, let me close this. I'm going to be drawing my cat, right? If you guys go to Google and type this in, now I didn't download this on these machines yet, but you could do this at home. There's this wonderful little link, it's called Pure Reference. So I'm going to click this open right now, and you see this window that pops open? And what does that window say? There's nothing here. But check this out. Now I could come back over and give me a second. I'm going, to, I'm going to move Photoshop over. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go to my ref pages, go to cat, go to JPEGs. See, I'm organized. And now I drop, drop these in here. And what's cool is when I'm working in Photoshop now, this page sits on top of my, my Photoshop page. And look, if I come over here and hit the space bar, it does this thing where it, it sort of zooms in and out. But see, I can scroll with a mouse button, and I can look at my reference while I'm working. So you can download that at home. It's called Pure Ref. And it's free. They ask for a donation. I gave them like four bucks because I use it all the time. So it's just Pure Ref. It's a great little folder. Check this out. So as I'm working, look at this. It's all organized. It's so much easier. I have two images with images inside there. And now I can scroll up and look at that guy's face, and I can sketch him, his body shape. Then I can scroll out with the mouse, come down here. If I right-click on the open window itself, I have all these controls that come up, okay? Really fantastic. I can tell it to go to the left side, the right side, is optimized cam. I could, all these different things I could do. I could clear it, put in new, it's just, it's a fantastic little thing because now I could sit here, I could touch Photoshop, I can zoom in, and look, and I can fully work in Photoshop now, and my reference isn't going. And I scroll over reference, touch it, and then I could scroll in, find the reference I want. Let's say I want to use those body styles. So then I could come back over here. I touch my Photoshop window. I go back to my brush. Let me get my other brush that's up here. And, and now I can sit and look at a shape like this. And I can be influenced by this individual shape. And I can use that as a guideline. But then let's say I want to do a different type of face. Uh-oh. Hold on. I zapped out. There it is. Look, I can even grab the image and move them around, which is pretty cool. And then you can just scroll in like this, okay? And that's it. It's pretty cool, right? Sometimes it gets a little, does that little flicker thing. So now I'm trying to zoom over, and it won't let me. It's the darndest things. Sometimes that's the only little problem I've had where I have to get that other image. There we go. And I zoom them out, and then I can zoom in, and there, there we are. And I can move them around. I could look, zoom into that page, touch the page behind it. It comes up on top. It's a really great little little program. And now I could sit here, look at all my cats, and then just sit here and just have fun. You know, I might look at a different set of eyes. I might go in a hole. I might look at a nose to see how somebody treated a particular nose and see if I can blend that into a cat, see what I come up with. And I just sketch. I have fun. Okay? That's it. So... Benefits there. Pure reference, great. When you're done with it, you right click, you tell it close, it's gone. Back into Photoshop, okay? And then whenever you want on any different machine, even if you have dual monitors, I can just double click and see this, it opens up, even on Windows format, and I can just look at it in viewer like this. So I can put it, look at my reference. I like to print this stuff out. I'll print it out on a color printer and I keep it next to me. Actually, at home in my studio, I have a little arm that holds images, and then I just put my reference under a little clip so when I'm working, I can just look right up at my reference. I love to do that. Sometimes I have multiple pages of reference depending on what I'm working on. Okay, I just showed you this as an example for this particular project because this is a character design class. 
I'm about to create my own mood. That's what my instructor, a friend of mine, calls them mood, but I call them reference pages. On um, I'm we're, I'm working on an assignment right now for painting uh, tundra in mountains and snow. So I have a whole bunch of variations of different types of mountains, front lit, side lit, back lit, early snow, vegetation, and so on. And then I can go and I'm going to make my own page, 11 by 17 though, for those. And then I usually print them eight and a half by, uh, by 14 legal size. And then I have that out and I can use that. So I would highly recommend everybody in this room. Now, I've done you a very just service that not many other instructors do which is on all of my projects, and I do this to cover um, my relationship with you in terms of when you go, well, I didn't know what to draw. I'm like, look, I have a blog, and not only do I put the project up there, but look at all the reference I give you. I've already gone through and grabbed a ton of reference for you. So when you tell me you couldn't come up with an idea and you didn't know which way to go, look at all this reference up here, all these styles, all these variations. I've already, look, I have the crane, I have different bird samples up there, samples from some other movies, other artists, sketches, all that reference is there for you, okay? So I would highly recommend, between now and next class, the serious and devoted students will come back and you will have a reference page already ready to go. So you can just look at it, you can just pull it out on a piece of paper, and you can go, oh, what were the eyes on that one character that had a rounded face? I want to put those eyes in with this guy's fluffy face. And next thing you know, by putting in a couple different variations like that, you come up with a really fantastic solution to resolving a uh, particular design problem. Okay? All right. Let me end the demo right there, and I'll render this out, and we'll post it up.